Welcome to our deep dive into D.H. Lawrence's Sons and Lovers. Oh, Sons and Lovers, one of my favorites. Yeah, it's a really good one. Today we'll be trying to untangle all those complex relationships in the Morell family, you know, especially the bond between Gertrude Morell and her sons. Mm. But it's not just family drama. Right. We'll also look at how Lawrence brings in those anxieties, you know, the social and economic anxieties of that time. It's a world that's right on the edge of huge change. Yeah, and that's one of the things that makes this novel so interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Lawrence just drops us right into the middle of this big transformation. Picture it, a small mining town in England, late 19th, early 20th century. Right. The coal industry's arrival is like turning everything upside down. Yeah. And it's not just about new jobs. It's about how people live their lives. Yeah. It's all changing, sometimes for the better, sometimes not. Yeah, and the Morell family's right in the thick of it, trying to figure out this new world and where they fit in. You mentioned how the coal industry really changed things. Yeah. And the book talks about all these new mines popping up, mm -hmm. and they're all connected by these railway lines that snake through the countryside. It's like they're stitching together a whole new reality. It feels almost like this living thing, this industry growing and pushing its way into their lives. Exactly. And as this industry keeps growing, we're introduced to Walter Morell, the father, who's a coal miner himself. At first, he's this charming guy, you could even say romantic, Oh, interesting. Yeah, Lawrence describes him as having this southern pronunciation and purity of English that really captivates Gertrude. He's a skilled dancer, too. Hmm. But as time goes on, you know, the tough reality of his work and the world changing around him, they kind of start to wear away at that charm. So it's like all that pressure from the outside starts to weigh down on him and change him. You can see that when we hear about how he keeps criticizing the pit manager right. in public, too. Right. Not the smartest move when your job depends on the guy. No, not at all. And this is where Lawrence really shows us how these big social and economic forces are messing with people's lives. Yeah. You know, he links it to their personal struggles. Like with Walter, his speaking out has consequences. Uh -huh. They give him the worst jobs in the mine, the ones that don't pay much. Mm -hmm. And that just makes him more frustrated and angry. He starts drinking to cope, and his marriage to Gertrude really starts to crumble. It's like a domino effect. Yeah. All that pressure from the outside world, it comes right into their home, affecting Walter's work and his relationships. And speaking of Gertrude, she's such a fascinating character, so complex. She is. At the beginning, she's attracted to Walter's charisma. Yeah. But that fades fast. I see. She finds out he lied about their finances. They're stuck with a huge debt on their house. Can you imagine starting a marriage with that kind of burden? But Gertrude's not some pushover. She's smart, determined, and ambitious. But back then, society didn't give women like her many options to do what they wanted with their lives. So she puts all her energy into her sons, William and Paul, hoping they'll have a better life. Exactly. But it feels like there's something more to it. Right. Like a longing, almost a possessiveness in how she loves them. Absolutely. It's like she's living her dreams through them, you know, trying to find that fulfillment she never got. And that's what's at the heart of this book. Lawrence is exploring what family relationships are all about. He shows us how love can be this powerful force, mm -hmm. but it can also get in the way of people growing as individuals. And he shows how the world outside their house limits Gertrude, too. Mm -hmm. Like when she joins that women's guild, right, mm -hmm. where women get together to talk about social issues, it's like we get a glimpse of her curious mind, her wanting more than just being a wife and a mother. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's pushing against what society expects of her. And that drive, you see it in little things, too. Like what? Oh, like when she's at the market bargaining hard to get the best prices. It's subtle. But Lawrence uses details like that to show how resourceful women had to be back then, how hmm. practical. It's amazing how he weaves those little details into the bigger story. And I'm really curious to see how William and Paul, you know, how they deal with their own ambitions and desires with all these family dynamics and societal expectations going on. I know, me too. It's almost like their stories are a reflection of what their parents went through. Yeah. As we delve into their lives, we'll see how those forces can echo through generations. But before we get to William and Paul, what are your impressions of Walter and Gertrude so far? It's really striking how both Walter and Gertrude are grappling with all these bigger forces shaping their lives. Yeah. And their sons, William and Paul, they're right in the middle of it. You said their stories are almost like a mirror to their parents' struggles. Yeah. So let's start with William. He gets out of the mining town by getting a job in London. His mother must have been thrilled. Oh, yeah. <laughs> William is like the embodiment of Gertrude's dream 
of escaping their social class. He's a yearning for something better, something beyond what his father could achieve. And for a while, it looks like he's going to make it in the city. But then, of course, tragedy hits. Right. William's death is a turning point in the book. It's not just about him. It affects the whole Morell family. It's such a devastating loss, especially for Gertrude and Paul. Oh, yeah. And the way Lawrence writes about their grief. So powerful. It's not just sadness. Right. It's a whole mix of emotions. For Gertrude, it's like her own dreams died with William. Oh, wow. And for Paul, it's even more intense. He was always close to his mother, mm -hmm. but now... Their bond becomes almost, like, too much. It's as if William's death leaves this hole that both Gertrude and Paul try to fill with each other. Yeah. But by doing that, they risk getting stuck in this cycle of grief and dependence. And it's around this time that we're introduced to these two women who will be so important in Paul's life. Miriam Levers and Clara Dawes. Yeah, two very different women. Miriam's all about the intellectual and spiritual side of things, mm -hmm. while Clara is a whole different challenge for Paul. So let's start with Miriam. She's from this religious family on a farm nearby. She's got this quiet, thoughtful intensity about her. Paul's attracted to how deep she is, and they both love art. But their relationship is full of tension right from the start. It's that they're speaking different languages, even when they're trying to connect. You mentioned Miriam's hesitant about physical intimacy yeah and her relationship with her own mother is complicated too it kind of hangs over her connection with paul exactly and that tension highlights a big theme in the novel uh. how people try to figure out who they are when they're so caught up in these family relationships it seems like paul's trying to figure out who he is both in relation to his mother and these women he's drawn to but with miriam it feels like he's looking for something he can't even put into words yeah maybe it's something she can't even give him right right and then you've got Clara Dawes. She's the opposite of Miriam. She's a suffragette separated from her husband, Baxter Dawes. Okay. She's got this fiery independence and sensuality that both attracts Paul and makes him uneasy. Oh, interesting. Clara is a force of nature. She challenges Paul in ways Miriam can't. She's outspoken. She's politically active. And she represents a world beyond the mining town and the farm. Right. Their affair is passionate but it also brings destruction. Oh, wow. Kind of like the relationship between Gertrude and Walter, actually. It's as though Paul is drawn to these two women who are complete opposites. Mm -hmm. Miriam, the intellectual, spiritual one, and Clara, who is bold and sensual. Oh. It's almost as if he's trying to find himself by exploring these different sides of women. That's a good way to put it. Right. And yet, neither relationship really satisfies him. His mother's presence always looms over everything. It's like he's stuck in this love triangle and can't fully commit to either woman because of this intense, maybe even unhealthy bond with Gertrude. Yeah, it's like he's trying to break free, but something keeps pulling him back. Exactly. You called it a love triangle, stuck between these two women who offer different things, but his mother's still there. Right. And then on top of all that, Gertrude's health starts to decline. Another layer to this already complicated situation. Exactly. And as Gertrude gets sicker, Paul gets more and more focused on taking care of her, which makes his internal struggle even worse. Yeah, I see that. He wants his own life. He wants to chase his passions, have relationships, all that. But then there's this huge sense of duty and love for his mother. It's like he's torn between wanting to be independent and needing to take care of her. It's kind of sad how family can hold us back sometimes, even when it's out of love. It is. And then Gertrude dies. It was bound to happen. How does Lawrence handle this? It's a big moment in the book. It's heartbreaking. Just raw emotion. Paul goes through all these feelings at once. Relief, guilt, incredible loss. Yeah. Complicated grief, just like their relationship was. Thanks, so. He loved her so much. But he also resented how much control she had over him. And in that grief, he even thinks about, you know, ending his own life. It's powerful. Shows how deeply connected they were. Wow. That image wanting to escape the pain by dying, it really emphasizes how close they were, even if it was a bit suffocating sometimes. But he decides to walk towards the town lights. Towards the future, kind of. What do you think that means? Is it hope? Or is he still haunted by the past? I think that's what makes the ending so interesting. It's ambiguous. Lawrence doesn't give you a straight answer. Right. Paul choosing to walk towards the light could mean... He wants to embrace life, move on from all that sadness and what held him back. Yeah. But his mother's influence is still there. You know, Like a shadow. 
Yeah, you wonder if you could ever really escape it. So it's like the ending is a reflection of the whole novel. Absolutely. You see the characters battling their own desires, what society expects of them, and all the tangled family ties. Mm -hmm. They're all looking for that sense of belonging, of purpose. And yeah, they have moments of connection, of joy, but then there's also disappointment and loss and just the limits of their lives. Exactly. And I think that's why this book still speaks to people today. It's about these universal human experiences, Mm. the kind that go beyond time and place. Right. The struggle to be your own person, the search for love and acceptance, dealing with what society throws at you and the impact of family. That's heavy stuff. Yeah, it is. But we all deal with those things in one way or another. So Sons and Lovers is more than just a story about one family. It's about what it means to be human. I like that. It makes us think about those big questions, you know, about love and loss and finding meaning in a world that can be pretty tough. It does. It is like he's trying to break free from all these influences, but they just keep pulling him back. You called it a love triangle earlier. Uh. He's torn between these two women who each offer him something different, but he's still tied to his mother. And then as the story goes on, Gertrude's health starts to go downhill, which just makes everything more complicated. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> As Gertrude's health gets worse, Paul becomes more and more consumed with taking care of her. And that just intensifies his internal struggle. Yeah. On one hand, he wants to have his own life, explore his own passions, pursue relationships freely. But on the other hand, he feels this overwhelming sense of duty and love for his mother. Right. He's trapped between wanting independence and needing to take care of her. It's a really poignant portrayal of how family dynamics can sometimes hold us back, even when those bonds are rooted in love. And then, of course, Gertrude dies. It was inevitable. How does Lawrence handle this moment? It's such a crucial part of the novel. Oh, it's heartbreaking. The scene is full of raw emotion. Paul is hit with this wave of conflicting feelings, relief, guilt, and a profound sense of loss. Wow. It's complicated grief, reflecting the complexity of their relationship. He loved his mother deeply, but he also resented the hold she had over him. And in that moment of grief, he even contemplates following her into death, which is incredibly powerful. It shows how deeply connected they were. That's such a powerful image, the idea of him wanting to escape the pain of his loss by ending his own life. It really underscores just how connected they were, even if that connection was sometimes suffocating. But he ultimately chooses to walk towards the lights of the town, suggesting a step towards an uncertain future. What's your take on that ending? Does it symbolize hope? Or is he still haunted by his past? I think that's what makes it such a great ending. It's ambiguous. Lawrence doesn't offer any easy answers. Paul's decision to walk towards the lights could be interpreted as a desire to embrace life, to move on from the darkness of grief and the constraints of his past. But the shadow of his mother's influence lingers, and we're left wondering if he can ever truly break free. So, in a way, the ending reflects the themes of the whole novel. We see these characters wrestling with their own desires, societal expectations, and the complexities of family relationships. They're all searching for fulfillment, for a sense of belonging and purpose. And while they experience moments of connection and joy, they also face disappointment, loss, and the limitations of their circumstances. Sons and Lovers isn't just a story about one family. It's a reflection of the human condition. It makes us think about those big questions. Love, loss, the search for meaning in a world that often feels chaotic and unyielding. And if you found yourself drawn into the world of the Morels, I'd highly recommend exploring more of D.H. Lawrence's work. He was incredible at delving into the depths of human experience. You might find yourself really captivated by his powerful storytelling and insightful observations. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. 